Hello, everybody uh, from all over the world in the internet. Welcome to the Johannesburg International Comedy Festival. Catch up sessions is what I'm going to call it because we weren't able to have a festival this year. We decided to get in touch with all the comedians who have done the Joburg Festival before. One of my absolute favorites is the one and only Maureen Langan. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I wish I were there with you, though. Having you know too what's much wine. Oh, I remember that. The last time I saw you, we were drinking wine late into... I think we might have even spent the night together. We did not spend the night together. We spent the whole night together until the sun came up. And I thought... I had no idea where you lived. I'm like an oldest sister of six. I'm like, you could sleep on the floor. I mean, you need to stay... I mean, and I'm thinking the guy's probably thinks I'm a cougar pervert, but I'm just pretty, you know how loving and protective uh, I am. I do, I do, I do remember that. And I'm like, and we, and had, then, the, we had the oh, deepest conversations. Oh, I know, we really did. And I love you. And I'm like, I don't want him driving home. You're like, no, I only live over there and I haven't been drinking. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> all this time I thought I was going to get lucky with an, with an American woman. You were just being kind. <laughs> oh, God, yes. No, I loved you. But I really was. I like, you know, I have, my, I have five brothers and sisters. I can't tell you how many times ah. you go all over the floor. You're not driving. You know, anyway. That it's so cool. funny. When, when I was introducing you and I was like, Maureen Langen, in my head, the first question was, when last did you hear a clap after your name? I always clap after I say my own name. <laughs> <laughs> so always. Self-love. Self-love. You've got it down. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, but you know, with the, the festival, I was so happy to be on the first festival there in Johannesburg. Uh, what was your experience like? Was it your first time in performing in South Africa? Yeah, it was, a, it was great. I, I did a TED Talk about it. Uh, my TED Talk is... Oh, about, wow. Yeah, it's called The Business of Fun. And I really what I was talking about, what I felt when the first time I was in Johannesburg was the, um, how inclusive everyone was. And you know, you everybody knows the underbelly of their own culture and their own lives. But when you're an outsider coming in, you can only feel the energy that you first feel. And I was so taken, I called it effervescence because all these people were coming together. And it reminded me of like Brooklyn, uh, you know, a neighborhood in Brooklyn where you had blonde bobs and black braids and people of all colors and shades and looks. And they were just so excited the way people stand up or hover when, when they like what you're doing. They're like hovering. They're like not sitting, not standing. Are you talking about, are you talking about our audience, the South African audience? Oh, the best audience is ever. <laughs> like it was the best ever. It's like, this is magic. And I, yeah. No, I just thought it was a coming together of people that I haven't seen or yeah. experienced with that. You know, it was your, also your first festival and you know, that your history there and to see that people can be together in a way that they couldn't have been a generation mm. or two ago. So that wasn't lost on me. And I just, you know, there, there was a message in it about people, the, the beauty and diversity coming together. Of course, there's a- how did, that, how did that lead to a TED talk? Like, what was the first thing you said about us? Because this is, this is generally what tourism is trying to achieve. So I'm trying to see what imprints you would flew out of here with and started spreading after you came? Oh, good. I, I came with good tidings and spread good cheer. Um, I think what I was saying to people was that, um, I do tell people it reminds me of like a hip area of Brooklyn and the people, it was, the, it, it was all about the people. Like the, we had a fellow who played the music at one of the clubs where he performed at a nightclub and he had the, the cool hair and he, I have a picture of him, I'll send it to you. Um, so you have the band behind you as you're performing. But I think it was looking out at a sea of faces in an audience that not, none, they didn't all look the same. You know, when you go, there was something really great about seeing people coming together. So I tell people uh, that there was this, literally it felt like the bubbles of um, soda water. And it felt effervescence to me. Uh, effervescence. Do you know what's interesting about what you're saying? Because... I remember the second time I, I saw you was in Johannesburg, but the first time I saw you, we were both performing again in, an, in a completely different context because you say South Africa and you describe it like this, but the first time we met each other was in Switzerland. 
<laughs> which is which there's no sea of different anything in Switzerland because it's not all even food. not even food, yeah. it's all cheese. Like it's you can find a vegetable if you want to get. <laughs> So that, so that for me is an interesting, because that was back to back. What was that experience like? And I think my question to you is, were you performing outside of America or had you performed outside of that far outside of America before South Africa and Switzerland? No, I would say that's the farthest I have performed. I had performed often in the UK and Ireland because my mom's Irish and I have Irish citizenship, thank God, during those Trump nightmare years. Um, I have, uh, you know, safety in my pocket. But Switzerland... I, you know, I'd never been to Switzerland and it was so beautiful, wasn't it? And I actually cried when I got to the hotel because, you know, I was so, I don't know, I felt like so lucky. That's why you, that's why you, my people, Maureen, that's why, that's why you and I connect. Uh, well, you felt that way too? No, because there's something inside of me that, that is that, but I just have too much hardness and, uh, you're so full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Because when I'm around you, I'm like, yeah, if you scrape away most of my shit, I think I'm like that. Like I feel and I, and I cry and it's great. But at the moment, it just needs a lot of therapy and work before I get there. So I, I, bask in, I bask in your vulnerability is what I enjoy doing. Well, if you weren't open to that, I probably wouldn't share it to that extent. So there you go. Because uh, you're a very sincere person. And I've experienced you as a, just this warm love, you know, like family so that I like family that I like um but I think what was interesting first of all we went, were in Montreux Switzerland and they had this quaint gorgeous uh, outdoor Christmas village and you can get foie gras and champagne as you're walking who doesn't like that and I mean there there you go with that but overlooking the water um you know that separates from France and you're out looking and I was on the top floor. The fellow gave me a corner room because I like quiet, even though I'm a comedian, I like quiet. And I just looked out and I thought, you know, I'm the daughter of a garbage man who didn't finish high school. My mother took a boat from Ireland to America. And you just think like how lucky I am. And then beyond that is we, I met you, Loy, uh, fellas from uh, Rome and Paris and Russia. Italy, Baxter. Italy. You came with Baxter. Oh, ba Orlando Baxter, our big buddy from Boston, my buddy. Mm. Yeah, just a great crew of comics. And then we all find, so that experience was, um, you're in a very wealthy area of Switzerland. People are appreciative. They're smart. They're very, very white. Um, and then we go, very white. The so Orlando Baxter, the comic that we love from Boston, who's my also my comic brother. We worked in Edinburgh together at the festival and he and I, he's African-American and he and I took a picture anytime we saw a black person. <laughs> what are we doing in these cities? It's so fun. Cause I remember, I distinctly remember seeing you perform and I remember watching you and my immediate thought while I was watching you was, Oh, that's how you do this thing. Like I remember, I remember Loisa and I, you had this bit cause you had a bit that went on, I think, for your whole set. Like your set was it, was, it was like a true example of this is what it sounds like and feels like when a comedian has a bit, you know? It, and, and that's what I enjoyed about, about Switzerland. It was seeing those different styles because like when I watch the Italian guys and the French guys, it's all different styles. And even, even Orlando, who's from America, is like a different style for me. But when you came on, I think everyone was just like, okay, guys, a queen is now performing. Oh, yes. No, yes. No, not e but, but in terms of, in terms of craft, just in, uh -huh. terms of, just in terms of like, shit, man, wow, everything was ba 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 How did you feel when you were like out of a foreign country with other comedians from other countries doing that? Because I don't know if you felt that. Well, in Switzerland, I felt more tentative you killed it. You won like best of the show fest yeah. English fest. So you, and you had a very storytelling style that I really enjoyed. Uh, Orlando's very like, I'm, I was a teacher, you know, man. And uh, these is, that, is that your Orlando? Uh, please do an Orlando impression. Yeah. So yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, he's just, he's so mellow. Um, 
but and then we had this Russian comic who I love, Igor Mirson, who starts doing comedy in English, has been English. speaking English three minutes, and he's freaking getting standing ovations. Yes. So I just felt vulnerable, and I knew there was, you know, there was mm. managers there, and agents, people are judging you. I don't like contests. I think everybody's voices are very individual, and how do you? Yeah. And the Alex from the UK, this really, really wow. guy with yes. his outfits and killed us. He was like, seemed so like you didn't know what to expect. And he was absolutely hysterical. He was a guy, man, it was lovely. So when we went to South Africa for the first time and they uh, slated me to host the very first show I'm on. Um, and it's an old- We were upstairs in the, upstairs in the- Yeah, a good place. Some, some building, I remember that downtown. Very, and I remember, so there's these other women and they don't know me, I don't know them. And you know, in comedy, I don't know about you, but I tend to hold back and just be quiet and do my work until I know people, you know. Yeah. It, you're kind of inward, you know, you just want to kind of watch what that crowd's like and see what's going on. So I, I'm like, hello, hello, hello. And I, they were lovely, but I'm just like, I don't know who this American is who's going up first. And I could see when I went up first, I'm very mellow off stage and friendly, but on stage, it's my boxing ring. And when I'm just yes. like- you are, you are a puncher. Yeah, I'm a puncher. Mm -hmm. So I get up there, Tats, and I don't know what to expect. And that's when I felt the love, like the effervescence and the hovering and the people trying to reach you. And, and, they, and then when I come off, the gals are all like, all right, she's all right. You know, I got that. And that was like the- comics. Yeah, right? <laughs> she's all right. Yeah, she can stay, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. That is that, the vibe. Because that was vulnerable to go up first. And host and know that you're going to go back again. And not know these people and have never stepped foot once in your life on a stage in yeah. South Africa. I mean, I know as a comedian who lives in South Africa, who in terms of just in terms of festivals in our industry, you know, you go Montreal, Canada, you go Edinburgh, you go, that's the biggest one. There's Perth, Melbourne. And we don't really have a, a date where as comedians, we go, the world comes to us. So when Johannesburg International Comedy Festival, you know, was even in conception, it was like a huge thing where it was like, oh my goodness, we're going to get acts from all over. And then seeing people like you come down and us connect the way we did, it was mm -hmm. definitely, I think for me as an act and for South Africa as a, just I think as a comedy country, for people to come and see us and, leave going yeah 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 they do the thing down there it was it's a huge thing yeah and i'm glad you guys do it i think it's important to do and i remember <laughs> they, i took a flight from new york with a hundred hour stopover in london and then i get to johannesburg i'm oh, gonna like shoot myself over the sudan and i'm like just get me there <laughs> and i'm so exhausted I get out in Johannesburg and this wonderful, oh, I have, pic I have pictures of all these people. Lovely driver. Oh, I can't remember yeah. his name. Oh and God, like, Maureen, were you that tourist who's like, ah, 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 ah. Well, he had my name on this, you know, the, it's at the Johannesburg Festival. He's holding it up. Yes. And he goes, um, he goes, oh, I, he goes, oh, I'm here to pick you up. I said, I don't care if you're here to kill me. Just get me out of this airplane. I'm getting in a car with you. I don't know who you are, but I'm going with you. <laughs> care who you are at this point you know like he's reassuring me. Like, i don't give a crap oh, shit. In it. so That's tell funny. me how comedy's going in aside from the virus <laughs> aside from this huge worldwide pandemic mm. the scene like in johannesburg now with comedy tents oh no i mean if i have to I, people are starting to to put stuff on now uh because we've been in lockdown and level five, four, three, two, and the level that we're at now kind of allows more activity, limited number of people in, you know, safety measured uh, places. And uh, kind of people are starting to do shows. I've got a show this weekend, for example, in a little theater, I'm only having like 15 people in, but it's a boutique theater that seats like 40 people. So, so it's, it, people are starting to kind of, um, I think, I think what it is, it's at the level of your comfortability that people are, because the things are open, but not everyone's coming out. And so, you know, with people it's, I'm coming out because I want money or need money or I'm coming out because I need the social thing. So it's a real test of, you know, when they say your life is in your hands, this is proper, this is proper that now. Wow, that's true. So in terms of like, 
pre-virus, how was the scene? Are there a lot of clubs now? Theaters doing comedy? What is it like, the tone, you know, like... Oh, God. The <laughs> clubs, were, the clubs were, were starting to take a hit, to be quite honest. Uh, we had quite a few closed down. And then people were kind of migrating towards one-man shows or ensemble shows in theaters and big spaces, bigger spaces. Because in terms of like the, you know, the working out of material in the places where we can, those were kind of fading. But fortunately, there were enough comedians who had been doing it for long enough that could kind of see that transition and kind of build differently. And so I think we, we're in the new era of like uh, those ensemble shows, which are kind of produced properly and those one man shows, which people are taking risks and betting on themselves. So it's kind of shifting. Um, and hopefully I do hope, but I, I, I don't hope because I know as comics, we know that even as we do that, we need the other thing. So. When you say time, one man shows, are you talking about like a, a solo stand up show or a person? Correct. Uh, oh, okay. Because I yeah. do both. Like you have your stand up, and then you have more than just your stand up. Yeah, you yeah. Know. But it's it's you know as a comic. I mean, you you say you you did stand up and a TED talk. Do you do more talks? Do you do talks, or was that a once off? Oh, com you mean in terms of performing? Comedy wise, yeah. Well, I've been doing stand up for twenty years, so I do stand up yeah. whenever and wherever. But I have my solo show, Daughter of a Garbage Man, which is right. fun, deep, and then I do. Uh, I was a journalist for years, so I have a talk show. Hear ye, hear ye. Hi, you guys. You're hanging with Langan. And, you know, all of that can be yours for no money. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's insane. But, yeah, so I do all that. I remember that, um, what am I going to say it is, the place where you were at in comedy when I was watching you perform, it, I remember you being at what seemed to be it's almost like a, a place of making decisions because you were, you, were, you were very like, what's my next move? Because you, you wanted, it felt like you wanted the next step. And, and I remember it wasn't a, I don't know if this is even a word, it wasn't a megalomaniac attitude towards, towards the next move. But it, it felt, you know, when you're with someone and you're like, I can feel this person is looking for that next, you know, platform of expression. I don't know if I'm correct if I say that or, because even at, in Switzerland, when you say there were agents and that was like a pressure on you and you were feeling vulnerable, I remember even then, kind of that was the thing going on with you. Am I, yeah. am I off the mark or? No, I, I think comedy, I, I mean, first of all, one thing is I, I don't like contests. I, I can't stand them because the, the whole, Point of creativity is to be unique to yourself and it takes so many years to trust that and go inward because we're so taught to be similar and not dissimilar and that's weird so you spend so many years unpeeling it to get to who you are and then you got to be compared to other people to be considered worthy you're like what the, what is that i just spent my whole life that's the antithesis but you do them because there's other people that you want to meet and connect and continue to perform i think my um frustration that you were probably feeling and I talk about it a lot in my act and in my TED talk, is this cutting people off because they hit a certain age or they don't have a certain look or they don't fit a certain mold. And there was a time comedy would not have perhaps had a George Carlin uh, or um, television have a Lucille Ball or cooking have a Julia Child because they all got their breaks later or being anti-establishment or being beyond a certain age. So, I'm very aware that I don't fit a particular mold, but I do often, I say this humbly, for what gets rewarded sometimes, oftentimes, this is gonna sound, and I don't mean this, it, I don't see as much as a rewarding for the smart I, and funny. I see more of a reward, only from my experiences in the US, much more of a reward for style over substance. So you probably sense this, like, where am I fitting in in this crazy world? Like, where and I guess in, in your country, because it's almost, uh, I mean, I, there's a level of that I'm, not, I'm sure in, in, mo in all countries, but America is kind of entertainment. And you, you know, the New Yorks and the LA's, LA especially, fuck me. I remember I was there. I felt, you know, when you talk about the energy of a 
of a city. Yeah, yeah. tell me. I, what you- <laughs> no, it was just literally, I remember landing mm-hmm. and just feeling like everybody, everybody is ready to be discovered. So that means everybody is a certain way mm. in terms of interacting. There's a lot of like, what do you do conversations? <laughs> You, you lead, you lead, you lead with that. Like that's how you, that's how, that's how you engage in, in, in Los Angeles. Like I landed and I could just feel the plastic, you know, and I, and I got it. I mean, I understand that's, that's what it is, but I remember just going, fuck here. You can't just, you can't just be and then be discovered. You've got to, you've got to work that system and you've got to know those people and I guess, like you say, you've got to do it before a certain time or a different certain period. Yeah, but, you know, I don't even care about any of that anymore either. Because who, you know, I think the one thing probably in terms of, I'm not sure what you, I think to be creative, you know, you also want to be able to um, make a living. You have opportunities and you have creative uh, rewards, which is what, you know, tr- tr- makes us do all this but you also want the financial rewards that next and i think that's probably what you're feeling is you know you want the stability that comes with making a certain amount of money or any money or some and you know that that's probably what it is too or where do you fit in i don't know but i hope it didn't seem like i was like you know what's my next move no absolutely but 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 the thing is it's i mean that's normal for us like for for that thing of what am I going to do next? Not even on a career level, even on a micro level with comedians, it's what's my next fucking joke. As soon as they give me a standing ovation for this one that I just wrote. (laughs) So I think for us generally, just stopping and not knowing is very uncomfortable. Well, yeah, but with this, you've had to sit in it with this virus. You have to sit in it more. Oh shit. Yeah. So where's comedy going to go in the U S now? Because everybody's so that's one issue that you, you can ignore it. How do you talk about it? I mean, I long for the good old days when our biggest reality nightmare was keeping up with the Kardashians. I, I miss those days when that was the worst that we had going. But that, that, was, that was our worst times. Now, not anymore. Or you have like a woman, I did my show daughter of a garbage man. And I talk about my dad. Um, anyway, and I use the word, he's not fat. And a woman comes up to me afterwards and she's like, I really take issue with the fact that you use the word fat. I go, really? The fact that my father beat the shit out of me and I'm talking about that in the show, no problem with that. It's that I use the word fat. That's the problem. We're having the problem with the word fat. Well, my therapist said, I used to have eating issues. I'm like, well, who didn't, sweetheart? Get in line. She's like, well, I used to have, yeah, like, come on. She's like, I used to have eating issues and my therapist said that I should confront things that upset me. I go, and you picked me? You've been living your life 40 years without me and now all of a sudden it's my freaking fault that you can't handle the word fat. Get the fuck. This is what I get. This is why I hate people. I hate, I hate, I don't want to hate them. They make me hate them. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? They make me hate them. I like, what well, is this piece of, gee, I just put my heart and soul on the line about growing up. I freaking was in a hospital because I couldn't eat because of choking issues because of the violence in my family. And I use the word fat. And you're freaking upset. You get the, get away from it. Like, do you understand? Get the fuck, get away. That's the anger I put on stage. So this one, you can't say fat. You can't talk about the president who's ruining, uh, ruining the world. You can't talk about anything. So what are you going to talk about? Oh, hey, ever notice when you go buy a bagel? Like, what are, you, what are we going to talk about? Right. So I'm, I'm just, that's where I'm at with all that. I love it. I love it. Do you know? Do you know if I was the dramatic director, I would. This is where the interview would end. There is. We are in the middle of it. There is no end. We don't have answers. We and we're not here to try and and give any. I think what I love is the fact that it, we're real. I love the fact that you that you look healthy, that you are working, and you still. You know what makes me believe that you're still in it in terms of comedy is, is that rage? Is that the funny thing? I know. Well, that's what I was supposed to take to Edinburgh. I was working on um, my show. It's called Don't Make Me Hate You. And, oh, uh, that's great. Yeah. So, but of course, Edinburgh got all, you know, it didn't happen this year. So I'll do it next year. And I, what I'll do is funnel all this frustration about what I can't talk about. And what yeah. I'll do is flip it and go, but I can't talk about this. So I'm not going to bring up the fact and I'll go into it all. 
but I'll do it from, but that'll upset you. So, so I'm not going to say that and I'll say it. I think there's a way to couch it where you flip it back on yourself and tell them, don't be a fucking asshole. You know what I'm saying? Like, lovely. I'll see you soon, my dear. All right, my love. Be safe, okay? I will try my best and you too.